Hello, um, my name is Gleppi Kitten and I'm the technical founder of MetaHash. Uh, most of the questions we received for today's IMA are not directly concerned technical development uh, and more marketing and business development, but uh, I'll try my best to answer all of them as good as I can. Most of the questions for today IMA refer directly or indirectly to the price of the MetaHash coins. So before I start answering them, I want to try to explain how we as a team behind project development approach making decisions. We always try to act in the coin holder's best interests and in the current market conditions, it means that we must act very cost effective and concentrate on building uh, really awesome apps and gain their adoption that would bring fundamental value to the project long term. We are surely searching for clients that would use the network infrastructure and we are surely always looking for partners that could increase the adoption of Manhash network. But we have now taken the approach of never announce a partnership before the actual product goes really live. So when we are absolutely sure that we are control the uh, date of the launch and we know exactly that the project is fully ready and is ready to launch, we do announce. Uh, when it's just in the talks, even if like the partnership is signed, we don't announce uh, just to give uh, everybody the most accurate information that we have and don't give any information if we are not sure yet when it will be released. Exchange listings are, of course, an important part of developing trading and marketing strategy, but they're not a silver bullet. Uh, we are constantly working in that, that direction and trying to make our integration package as it is possible for new exchanges to integrate us. But the number of uh, good projects that are working and developing as that are good for exchanges to list is very few. So time is here on our side. However, when we uh, get uh, a proposal that is good and could have a positive ROI for our coin holders, we surely go for it. Uh, we just prioritize the best uh, deals that we have at the moment and postpone the rest. We are now making a transition from being an ICO company to a public network with a team that develops updates and additional applications and uh, is working on increasing the adoption of the network. So we are changing the website and uh, we uh, will have a special spot where we'll have the upcoming updates and uh, the estimates uh, that release dates that are up close and a special list of our like more common plans. But uh, the main focus remains, uh, remains the same, like we need to finish uh, the decentralization of the network and we need to attract as many clients as possible to use the network. We need to make uh, MetaGate more adopted and by increasing the numbers of users that use the MetaGate, increase the number of developers that are in interested in building applications for the network. Uh, achieving decentralization is our top priority right now. It's actually what makes blockchain networks valuable and important. Uh, Torrent node uh, is already on GitHub. We will provide instructions on how to build it. It will be tested on the main net and rewards will be activated later this month when everybody will uh, get more uh, customized with how the new system works and how the torrent nodes work. And uh, later on we will proceed with the new roles. So I think we are a couple of months away from achieving full decentralization of all network roles. Tokens surely play an important role in any blockchain networks. We are working internally on a very interesting thing that we call programmable tokens, where the user can actually see all the metrics without digging it up in the smart contract code. Uh, I do see a big future in MetaHash being LAR2 for existing proof of work networks like MetaBTC that could be transferred very quickly and for the tokens that are really needed in DApps migrating to MetaHash networks but I don't see bright future for ICOs, EOs, STOs right now. 
uh, the market is just not ready for more of the tokens flowing in. And I think the number of tokens on the market will continue to shrink and not to, you know, to expand in the coming years. Concerning Metagates, we need a couple of additional applications to keep the new users busy. And we need to set an example for developers. Of course, like we are very interested in launching some games in Metagate and also to migrating the Metagate protocol into other wallets uh, and first of all, of course, cryptocurrency wallets that we are already in talks with. Also, we are on track to integrate other dApps inside Metagate that would also bring some community inside Metagate from other chains to user applications and our community would be able to operate the dApps in other blockchains. Actually, what not everybody know is that Metagate is like just a normal browser and it can also access uh, networks like common internet or Tor, but it would need just a little bit of interface tweaks so it would be actually usable and can, uh, would be considered a normal competitor to other browsers. As the new role is already on Git, it is better just to wait for the instructions and uh, try it yourself. Uh, but uh, the recommended specifications in yellow paper are actually accurate and with the new system uh, that there would be no such fierce competition for who is the best competing nodes. So as far as the basic test is done, you are eligible for the role. So you don't need to be just like number one or like top 10 nodes. Uh, if you pass the test, uh, if you pass the test, like you are fully okay to go. It would actually be very hard to make something like a 51% attack in Metahash because you would somehow need to make people that are currently delegating coins to nodes, take out the delegations, sell the coins to you so you can prepare for the attack. And with the introduction of trust, you would need another six months like for your nodes to get enough trust to be able to create an attack at all. So even if it is a theoretically possible, it would be enormously expensive uh, and not that easy as it is in proof of work networks. The forging update is about one week away. It will make uh, farming uh, economically not interesting as it has a couple of mechanics that will drive down the arrow wild farms. And so the forging will get to where it initially was planned to incentivize new uh, people to join the network and like explore it for the first time. Considering marketing, there are two types of audience that we need to reach. First being the general audience. Forging is good at the start, but we need a couple of apps to uh, like make marketing funnels better and users to stick more with the Metagate. Secondly, we need to target uh, crypto audience. We of course explore by ourselves all possible options, which would be uh, give the best ROI for our coin holders. But we also need your help. I'm sure that like uh, you know some sites and services that we could miss where we surely need to be present. So please, if you know something uh, that you think uh, we need to be there, please tell. Thank you. I uh, guess uh, we do have plans to launch an investor program, but it's very time consuming at start. So don't yet know when we will get there. Uh, we removed the advisors from the website as the transition from an ICO website to a product website. Uh, uh, the deals with each advisor were individual, but they didn't include the compensation in MedHash coins. We are not going to launch an exchange ourselves, but uh, we make sure that we have all the tools needed for a decentralized exchange to be launched upon MetaHash. Because um, operating an exchange is a completely different business, so we don't include it inside the MetaHash project.
Yes, that is exactly the idea of Metagate to create an app store for different DApps and interesting ideas that can survive by themselves, but can survive as part of the app store uh, or both uh, in Metagate and integrated in other cryptocurrency wallets. It's a problem of hand and deck. You can't get A-class developers to build upon your platform before you attract the initial users. So we'll have to build the initial apps ourselves and with a couple of partners, gain more users and then it will already attract developers. Surely gaming is a very interesting uh, area to concentrate on. We already have a couple of requests from people willing to build upon MetaHash and I think uh, we would have a great future in that section. A possibility to create a decentralized social network including a decentralized social media platform is actually one of the things that motivated me to start MetaHash. Uh, the tools were just not there so I had to build ones. If nobody builds uh, a good social and social media platform on MetaHash, one day I would have to do it myself. The 100x advisors actually help a lot. They act practically as partners. Uh, they give us huge amounts of marketing, their contacts, they help in our business development, brainstorm ideas with us. So like they're really a very big help. When you delegate to a node, you transfer the right to vote uh, if a block is right, but you don't lose the right to vote for network governance. So you can have the funds delegated and still vote for the decisions that are important for network governance. The idea of the fork for BTC and ETH users was good in a bull market but not in the current uh, bear market so our current idea is to burn this amount of coins and to put them to the forging pool for 10 plus years so when the current pool for 10 years is over these funds will be used to continue forging I'm not an expert in the Cardano system, but as far as I know, there is a limit of 100 pools and to run one of the pools you have to own over 80% of its stake. It means uh, that uh, you must buy 10 million dollar worth of Cardano or you have to be one of the funds that participated in the ICO to run a pool and I wouldn't consider such a system to be permissionless as with the rest of deposit systems that have limits of like 20 or 100 pools uh, and nobody can actually run one. Mahash is very different because you don't need huge stake to be a node operator and you don't have to be even rich to be a node operator. You just have to have some reputation in the community so people delegate to you.